Hello fellow scribes, I'm David Gochran and today we are going to talk about BookBub ads because they made a pretty major change last week and I don't hear anyone talking about it yet and it's going to affect every single campaign that you run on BookBub from now on so I thought we should go through the change today and how it affects you. This won't be a primer on BookBub ads. I have a whole other video, which is basically a walkthrough, uh, a tutorial on the entire interface and lots of advice on creating your first test campaigns. And I'll put a link to that down in the description, along with a bunch more resources on BookBub ads, including a whole book I wrote on the topic if you wanna get that deep into it. And that was given a quick update too, so you know it's bang up to date, except for what I'm gonna to share today because that's hot off the presses. Um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. I'll have lots more videos soon and hitting that notification button will actually generate a ping when I drop a fresh one, so make sure to do that. It also helps out the, helps out the channel quite a lot and I deeply appreciate it. Okay, so in this video today, I'm going to explain the change that was made, talk you through how this affects your ads and how readers will view them, and then try to look ahead and see how it'll impact different types of campaigns on BookBub. Just keep in mind this change is brand new, so we don't have lots of solid data on how this will play out yet. Basically, we're all going to be guinea pigs together on this one, but I want to give you some advice based on my experience with the platform and um, how I think it will play out. Because um, I think even BookBub themselves don't know yet quite how this will play out because it's so new. Okay, so the change specifically is this. BookBub has removed its frequency cap and has replaced it with a recency cap. Now, what does any of that mean? And is it really that important? Well, yes, it's actually a huge change that affects everyone. As you will see in a moment when I break down what all that jargon means. Okay, so now this is going to get a little bit technical, but don't worry, I will explain it all in everyday terms um, because it's a pretty important to understand the change that has been made and how it impacts you because it is going to impact you if you run any ads on BookBub, which you really should do because it's a huge and passionate community of over 10 million readers and I get wonderful re results from advertising there. Okay, so up until now, BookBub ads had a frequency cap of four, which means that your ad campaigns were shown to readers up to a maximum of four times. Now, at that point then, the system would stop showing your ad to that particular reader, uh, unless you actually you know, copied that campaign and restarted the campaign again. But that was the cap, it was a hard cap of four, except when sometimes BookBub were testing the thresholds and, and testing out five, but I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. Um, now four times, showing a reader an ad four times, you might be thinking that sounds like a lot of times to show the same ad to the same person. But keep in mind that BookBub ads is very different to Facebook ads or Amazon ads or any other platform out there. For example, when I'm running my Facebook ad campaigns, I tend to stop them when they hit or even approach a frequency of around two because I figure if you know, a reader doesn't want my book, which is probably free or 99 cent or 2.99, especially if I'm advertising it on Facebook. Um, I probably have some kind of deal running. So if they've seen that deal and they passed up on it a couple of times, I don't think a third showing is really going to convince them. You know, this isn't a couch or a motorbike or a vacation. It, it, it doesn't take that much reflection or consideration to spend 99 cent or, or just to click a, a free download. So I personally feel that all other things being equal, if readers aren't biting at 99 cent, then that reader probably isn't for you. And a repeat showings are just a waste of money particularly when you consider how, you know, in your face those those Facebook ads are in your in your newsfeed especially. Like you you really can't you really can't miss them. Book ads are different. They are predominantly delivered by email. And the ad slot itself is at the very bottom of that email. I don't know if you're a subscriber to BookBub as a reader. And if you're not, I recommend doing that just to see how the deals operate. And also because the deals are really good, right? So when you get your featured deals email every day, the ads, there's only one ad slot in that email and it's right at the bottom of the email after all the other deals. So there's lots of opportunities, if you like, for a reader to get distracted by, you know, if they see a Stephen King deal or, or some other author that they like, they'll click on the deal, they go to Amazon or Apple or wherever they buy books and they probably will forget to come back to their email and probably will not scroll down and see your ad. So I usually tolerate a lot more, a lot higher of a frequency cap, cap on BookBub than I would on Facebook. Okay, so I'm more than comfortable with the, the old system where they would show my ad four times to a reader because I know that the reader probably hasn't physically seen that ad four times. It's, it's highly unlikely. They might have only seen it once or twice or maybe even not at all. So I would even go further than that and sometimes I would copy a campaign and so I'd be running it up to eight times to the same reader because there really is a good chance that they haven't seen my ad. And I would generally find the performance was quite good. So when BookBub was testing a cap of five, um, like showing the same ad to the same reader five times. 
Um, I was more than comfortable with that because I would often force it, the system to show the ad more than that. Okay, so my problem wasn't with the frequency cap with, at, at BookBub. I was fine with showing my ad four times or even more times to a reader. My problem with BookBub ads was something else. It was the lack of a recency cap, which is what they've just brought in now. So that's why I'm very interested in this change. So what is a recency cap? Okay, so a recency cap is the amount of time the system waits before showing the ad to the same person again, uh, which is a good thing. You definitely want some form of recency cap in your ad platform, which is why um, I was disappointed that BookBub didn't have one up to now and why I'm really happy that they have instituted one now. So, um, you know, I told you that I'm fine with showing to an ad a reader, an ad to a reader a couple of times, but I don't want that second impression to happen right away after the first impression. I find that's less effective. And you can just see yourself that it's less effective. You know, Sometimes you do need to see a deal a couple of times um, for, for you to act on it, but it's much more effective if, the, if there's a gap between those two impressions, right? So you, know, you don't just see the ad and then scroll down and see the ad again. That's not super effective. And because BookBub never had a recency cap before, this meant that you know, if there was two slots in the email, and, and BookBub had been testing this recently, I saw not in the featured deals emails, but in some of the other emails they sent out to readers, like, you know, they might have a, a, a digest of all the, the blog articles. They have, you know, notifications about reviews and recommendations and other things. There's, there's a, they've been generating a lot of site activity, if you like, in the last couple of years, trying to turn the site into more of a kind of a Goodreads type site where there's, you know, readers are reviewing books and recommending books to each other and just increasing the social elements of the site, right? So all those social elements generate more emails to readers because there's more notifications going out to them. So that means there's more ad slots for us, which is a good thing. But when there's two ad slots in the email, like they were testing recently, I was noticing the same ad repeating twice, which is not good for readers, not good for advertisers, and probably not good for BookBub either. And the same phenomenon had been playing out for quite some time on the website. Now, there are ads on the website. They're not the kind of centerpiece of the action. They're still, the, the ads and the emails are you know, what are most effective and driving the most action on BookBub. But they do have a website and they've been building up the traffic to a website, increasing reader engagement on the website, encouraging them to spend more time on the website. So that has become a useful place to advertise also. Now, there are regularly more than one ad slot on, on a lot of those pages, right? So if they go in and look at the deals or any other aspect of the site, they'll often see two ad slots. And because there was no recency cap in the system, often the same advertiser, the same ad for the same book will be appearing in both those slots on the same page. And then sometimes you would click to the next page and you would see the same ad repeated twice again. Now, if you're an advertiser, and your ad is gonna be shown four times to a reader, and that uses up your four impressions straight away, that's not a good deal for you. Okay, but now that has changed. BookBub has finally brought in a recency cap, and how is it gonna work? Well, in my opinion, now this is early days, so we, we, we don't know yet. It's gonna take a little time to collect some data, run some experiments, do some tests, and see how it all plays out. But in my opinion, BookBub have gone for a really conservative recency cap of three days. So that means that, if your ad gets served to a reader on a Monday, let's say they open their featured deals email on a Monday and your ad is there, the system won't show them that campaign again until Thursday at the earliest. So I think that's pretty conservative. Um, now, I suspect BookBub are gonna play with that. They're often split testing different things, testing the thresholds. They're a very data focused company, a very reader focused company. So I think they're gonna look at that and they're probably you know, test out different recency caps, maybe two days, maybe four days, and see how that affects ad performance. And of course, reader reaction to the ads, because you know they're very concerned that the ads work for readers as well as you know the authors and publishers and book of themselves, of course. Now, so the official re recency cap right now is three days. That's the important thing. Um, and I actually wouldn't personally mind if they dial it back to just two days or even, or even one day, but we'll see what happens when we all run more ads and they have more data to work with. So what does this change mean for you? How will it affect your ads? Do you need to do anything right now with your ads that you currently have running? Do you need to change your marketing plans in any way? If you're somebody like me, where BookBub is actually a big part of every marketing campaign you run. Well, let's break it down, okay? Um, the first and most obvious effect, if you just want the headline news here, that overall, in very simplistic terms, I think this will improve ad performance generally. 
And that should be visible immediately in improved CTRs, your click-through rate, right? And, you know, improving your click-through rate will help to drive down your click costs and generally improve your ROI, your return on investment. So all that is great. Um, the system will be showing your ads to more fresh people rather than more repeat views to the same people. So you will have less wasted impressions and you'll get more bang for your book overall. And I think especially those running lower budget campaigns will no, will will immediately notice that more than those running higher budget campaigns. So I'm definitely a fan of this change. I just want to point that out before things get complicated here. Because any big change like this is bound to have lots of side effects, which we will have to account for in our marketing campaigns. So as I said in my guidebook on this topic, which is called Book Bob Ads Expert, there are basically two ways you can use Book Bob Ads, fast or slow. I know some pretty revolutionary thinking there, but seriously, authors tend to be either run, either using long running campaigns at a lower spend to permanently push a book, usually like a, a perma free or cheap book one in a series with the aim of funneling new readers into the series constantly. So this is a preferred tactic of wide authors who are those who are available on all retailers rather than exclusive to Amazon. So Wide authors tend to use this tactic a lot because they often have a perma-free or cheap book one and because that's a tactic, one of the few tactics that has always worked really well on all retailers, retailers outside of Amazon where it's often more challenging to sell books. But Kindle Unlimited authors can use BookBub ads in that way too and they do that regularly, especially if they have you know, a permanently cheap book one, which many of them do. Okay. But that's not the only way to use BookBub ads and not, and not even my favorite way to use BookBub ads. Many authors will use BookBub as an accelerant, right? When they really want to turn up the juice on limited time campaigns. For example, if they're running a 99 cent sale, if they're doing a temporary free run, if they're launching a new book. Anytime you have a shortened window on a price promotion or anytime you're releasing something new, you might be looking to maximize sales in a short period of time, right? So this approach tends to be more favored by Amazon exclusive authors, although not just by them. For example, all of my historical fiction and all of my nonfiction is wide. It's not in Kindle Unlimited, it's not exclusive to Amazon, yet this is still my preferred way to use BookBub ads. And what I personally think the platform is uniquely good at, because no other platform is quite as good at getting lots and lots of discounted books into readers' hands in a short time frame. It's the founding idea of BookBub, if you like. So it's no surprise the ad platform also reflects that and is great at that too. Okay, so this change. If you're if you're using the platform for that kind of always on advertising that I talked about that wide authors tend to prefer, if you're using it slow, right? And um, maybe to push that perma free book or a cheap book one, then this change is a massive boon for you. And I think we can say that in pretty much an unqualified way. No longer will you have to restart long running successful campaigns because they run out of run out of opportunities to show that to the same reader. Successful campaigns that you have running constantly will no longer hit a wall and run out of juice. They will just keep showing them to readers albeit with that gap of three days between impressions. So you can basically keep those campaigns running forever. You don't have to worry about the ads over serving to readers. Um, it will only show them the ads once every three days at most, right? So this should improve your performance pretty noticeably and reduce your busy work in pretty obvious ways too. Now, we don't have any hard data yet, so this is all guesswork, but that's how I see it playing out for those type of campaigns, for those types of authors, for people who use BookBub ads in that manner. Now, I think BookBub will be monitoring the results closely themselves. They're pretty good at that. They're good at testing different thresholds. They're good at crunching the data, and they're good at listening to authors as well. No other ad platform out there, I think, in my opinion anyway, has such an open communication channel. There are regular presence at conference back when we used to have conferences. Um, and so don't be afraid about giving them any feedback about this or any aspect of the platform. I find them pretty pretty open to, to receiving feedback. Okay, so what if you're that other kind of author, someone who uses the platform more like me, you know, to really boost a 99 cent sale in a five or seven day window or to really boost a launch or, or a free run or something like that. Um, is it as positive a change? Well, I think the jury is out there. Um, I think, you know, this changes things quite a lot for people who use the platform fast, like me. Um, and no, maybe not all of it is positive. We're going to have to see how it plays out. I think fast authors um, will also benefit from the improved general performance I talked about, right? I think that's just going to help everybody um, because those repeat servings will be reduced um, dramatically where, you know, someone is seeing the ad twice in one email or twice on the site or whatever. Um, but I don't think this is going to be so positive for those who are running large scale campaigns, because I think that recency cap 
is a little bit too conservative, as I said. I think, again, let me stress, we don't have the data yet. This is me seeing, trying to think how it's all going to play out. But for example, if I just have a five day window to push a deal, that's only going to give me at maximum two servings to the same reader, um, which sounds like a lot, but it, it really isn't if you consider that a lot of the readers won't scroll down and see the actual ad. I was more than comfortable with the old system where I was showing a reader the same ad four times, even in, over the, a shortened time span of a few days. And now under the new system, it's only going to show my ad to these readers twice tops in the space of in the space of five days. So um, the way I think you should handle that, if this describes you, if you are someone using the platform fast and you're doing higher scale, bigger budget campaigns, I think you're what you're going to need to do to maintain performance, you might need to clone the campaign and run the exact same campaign twice to the same audience pool, right? Because this clock on, on recency cap works the exact same way as the clock on frequency cap did in that it resets if you copy the campaign. So it's only tied to one particular campaign. So if I have a campaign targeting, I don't know, all the all the readers of Ken Follett, for example, because he's one of my comp authors. It's an audience I'm definitely going after with my historical novels. Let's say I have a campaign targeting his readers. If I find that I'm running out of people to show the campaign to, um, it's probably because of that recency cap. And what I will need to do is copy the campaign and run it simultaneously, run actually two campaigns simultaneously at the same audience. That's that's how I think you know the workaround is gonna work. But as I said, we don't have hard data yet. So if you're trying that strategy, that workaround, I recommend the cloned campaign, putting that at a lower budget first and just seeing that it performs as well as the original. And you'll be able to tell that in a really obvious way just by the CTR. So if the CTR is in the ballpark of the first one, I would say let it run and even turn up the budget. If it drops significantly, switch it off and just stick to your original campaign. Okay, so um, that workaround sounds a little bit mad, um, but do test it at a lower budget first. But I think, you know, I think the results are gonna be good. I'm gonna be testing this a lot and I'll be sharing the data too. Um, don't forget now, there are a bunch of resources in the description to help you out with BookBub ads as well. Um, especially my BookBub, ad, my BookBub ads book, which is called BookBub ads expert, uh, which several people told me it reads like it was written in the pub. Well, there is a reason for that. It also comes with a cool set of bonus resources. Um, I have a gallery of winning ad images. I have lots of optimization advice. I even have a place for people to ask questions. And of course, I'll be testing all these changes myself and I'll be sharing any results I get, any insights I get with you. You, so make sure to hit that subscribe button. But in summary, the big change at Book of Ads, and it really is a big change, is the frequency cap is gone and the recency cap is in its place. And what that means is no longer will BookBub stop serving your campaign to readers once they've seen it four times, but what they're going to do now is put in a gap of three days between every impression in that campaign. Okay, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks a lot, guys.